What's going on guys, this is Joe Young coming at you another video for the week. So this week I'm going to give you guys an update on my 33 gallon nano reef tank. So the last update for this tank was back in August actually. Actually at that time I actually had a bunch of rose tip bubble anemones. Uh, fast forward a couple months, I actually had uh, a few more splits uh, since then and I'm actually back to uh, five again and I went ahead and actually sold off um, one of them already and then probably the other one will be sold off uh, in a couple of days here. Now other than anemone, uh, the other corals has not really grown for me. Um, I would say it's kind of just been in a sustaining state where the coral is doing, you know, it looks like it's doing fine but it's not really multiplying, um, if that makes sense. It just looks like it's just kind of staying about the same size, it's doing okay. I would say I'm probably not putting uh, as much effort into um, doing the water changes every uh, bi-weekly on these tanks. Uh, it seems like it's sustaining really well with the macroalgae in the sump. So currently I just have this tank on cruise control right now up until uh, the move because I don't really want to do any big changes to this tank. Now obviously all the tanks going to have to do some sort of hard reset or some sort of start over when I move the tanks. So I'm going to go ahead and wait uh, a few months until I move into the new house to actually do anything to these tanks. Uh, the one thing I'm really happy about is the uh, purple tang and the lightning maroon clownfish getting along really well. Um, I was kind of worried about the maroon clownfish getting really mean. You know, as they get bigger, uh, they do get really territorial. Um, I've noticed that um, ever since I've actually started feeding the enemies and actually putting my hand in there and just kind of cleaning and just scraping the tank. Man, that maroon clownfish, especially the big female, uh, she's super mean, uh, to be honest. She'll, she'll take a, a bite at the uh, tools that I'm, I'm using to kind of scrape, you know, the side of the the glass, um, anything that comes near the anemone, um, any of them actually really, um, there's there's probably five or four of them always in that tank and um, if I move anywhere near one of the anemones, that clownfish would jet straight across <laughs> the tank and just kind of chill right next to the anemone, and kind of protecting it uh, to be honest. Um, really, really uh, territorial towards anything that comes towards the anemone except for the purple tang. Now the purple tang and the other uh, gold nugget clownfish that's in the tank, no problem. Um, anything that moves around there, no problem. But <laughs> when my hand goes in there, that thing is uh, a target for sure. My one goal still is try to multiply and propagate a lot of these uh, utter chaos uh, zoas. Um, it's it's been the same you know polyps you know ever since I've had it um it has not expand to be honest and maybe just because it's under a uh, pretty high light um, right now and to be honest I, I dialed back the the lighting pretty pretty well to be honest um, but maybe it's just too close to the light and maybe I just need to move it around just to see uh, if, if there's a better spot for it and I'll probably again play with it um, on the next tank setup. Now over the few months that I've actually had these bubble tip anemones, I'm, I'm really enjoying and liking them a lot. Uh, I'm looking actually to get a few more different species. The one I'm really eyeing right now is a, a lemon drop um, bubble tip anemone. Uh, if you guys know anybody that actually may have some, um, that is a reasonable price. Uh, if you guys can just uh, hit me up with a comment or even just you know hit me with a PM or something like that. Uh, I'm definitely interested in getting some of those, but uh, at a reasonable price, um, I can actually start off with a smaller one. But um, the only one that I actually saw online currently was um, from some online website, but they're like asking for like $800 for it, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, I understand, you know, um, certain unique collector's versions of the corals can kind of be expensive, but when you're getting up to that price range, um, it can be kind of ridiculous, and I think it's kind of just overmarked or overpriced there a little bit. So while we're at it, uh, I kind of want to see how I want to redo this tank uh, in the new house. I'm thinking of actually doing a bare bottom, um, basically coral uh, setup tank and really just having the, the live sand or the sand bed only in the sump area just for the macro algae. Um, I think it'll be a little bit easier to clean. Granted, like I'm not really cleaning much in this tank just because um, the live sand is actually doing really well. And you know, just have a couple rocks in there and just really have everything just kind of bare bottom. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I, I know the I know the sand looks really nice on it, uh, but uh, I'm really thinking of just doing bare bottom, just keeping it simple and just doing a, a really nice uh, anemone slash coral uh, tank uh, set up in the new in the new house like that. All right, guys, and that is just a, a quick update on the, the Nano Reef Tank here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time, guys, peace.